I've also had cases where I've got everybody on board on a settlement agreement within one phone call and it's done. But if I had to give the negotiation process an average timeline, I would say around how long will your workers' comp claim take? The short answer is that it takes as long as you and your injuries need it to take. The average workers' comp case generally takes approximately 12 to 24 months, but that's a big range and it doesn't help you understand how long your particular case might take. That's because every case is different. Every injury is different. Sometimes a case may only take a matter of weeks and other times it could take years and years. So only by understanding the timeline for each each part of your claim can you figure out the total amount of time it will take. And I'm going to help you do that by sharing my experience as a New York workers' comp lawyer who's been practicing for the past 17 years. At the end of the video, I will also share some of the most common reasons why your case might get delayed, which you don't want to miss. The amount of time it takes to file your workers' compensation claim is largely up to you. Here in New York, you can wait up to two years after your accident or onset of your disability to file your claim for benefits, but I don't recommend putting it off. Waiting only makes it seem like your injury was not that bad, which will make every step of your case more difficult. So I recommend notifying your employer of your accident immediately and filing your claim with the workers' compensation board as early as possible. Now, I can't speak to timelines in other states, but here in New York, you have 30 days to notify your employer of your accident or injury. Once your employer has been notified of your accident, that they are supposed to inform the insurance company within 14 days. The insurance company then has 18 days to begin paying your benefits, assuming that they don't deny your claim. But what I tell my clients all the time is that you could possibly have a check waiting for you in your mailbox by the time you get home from the hospital. In certain circumstances, the insurance company will receive notice about your accident before you even file and will pay you voluntarily rather than draw out the entire process. That said, should they choose to deny your case, it could be a while before you see any money from them. If they make the decision to deny your claim, they have to report it to the Workers' Compensation Board and then will likely be another one to three months before a hearing gets scheduled. Altogether, a denial will add at least several weeks or months to your claim, and there's no way around it. If you want to learn more about denied claims, be sure to watch my other video about how to fight back against the insurance company and win. Once your case has been filed and accepted, chances are it will eventually end in a settlement. Nobody wants to drag out workers' comp claims, which is why many eventually end with a settlement, often in the form of a lump sum of money. There are a few different types of workers' compensation settlements that can happen at any point in time during a case, and the settlement process itself may be fast or slow, depending on your specific situation. Some of the reasons why your settlement might be fast include if you don't want to have surgery, the insurance company doesn't want to litigate your case, you need money now and you don't want to wait, you don't have a very strong case, or the insurance company makes a low ball offer that you accept. Whatever the reason may be, please keep in mind that a fast settlement is almost always undervalued. It's just quick and easy money. It's impossible to accurately calculate the value of your case before your injury has improved, so any settlement made before that is going to be on the low side. This is often called nuisance value, and in most cases it could be less than $5,000. You could be offered this nuisance value within a matter of weeks or just a few months depending on your situation. The slower and more common settlement process typically requires that you wait until you reach maximum medical improvement, or MMI, before settling your case. MMI is when your condition is stabilized and further medical treatment is not expected to significantly improve it. And the reason why most settlements don't happen until you reach MMI is because it is impossible to know the true value of your case before then. You don't know how much more medical care you'll need, what your disability rating might be, or how much your wage earning capacity will suffer as a result of your permanent disabilities. So you often need to wait until your doctor declares that you've reached MMI before you can negotiate a settlement. But how long does that take? Well, generally speaking, if your injury involves an extremity such as an arm, leg, hand, or foot, it can take a year from the date of accident or surgery to reach MMI. If you have an injury to a body part like your spine, lungs, heart, or brain, it's not uncommon for it to take two years before you reach MMI. And if you suddenly need additional surgery, that restarts the clock and generally adds another year to your case. That means the recovery process is often the longest part of your workers' compensation claim. If you're worried about your claim taking too long and you live in New York State, we can help. My name is Rex Sakofsky and I've been a workers' compensation attorney here in New York for the last 17 years. If you or a loved one have been injured on the job in New York and you'd like to set up a free consultation consultation with an experienced lawyer who will move your case along as fast as possible, please give me a call today at 212-406-8989. Our call is confidential. It costs you nothing and can get you more in benefits than you would otherwise receive on your own. Okay, back to the timeline. Once you've reached MMI, all that's left to negotiate is your settlement and get it finalized. When negotiating, some insurance companies respond very quickly while others drag their feet. Unfortunately, you cannot force an insurance company to settle with you. So if they are slow to respond, the only thing you can really do is wait. I've had insurance company representatives reach out to me and say, hey, does your client want to settle the case? If so, how much does he want? And I talk to the client, I work up a demand and send it to them, and then crickets. They never respond, and they ignore me from that point forward. I don't understand why they do it, but keep in mind that this can happen. But I've also had cases where I've gotten on the phone with the insurance company, put them on hold while I spoke to my client, and got everybody on board on a settlement agreement within one phone call, and it's done. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. But if I had to give the negotiation process an average timeline, I would say around three to four months. Which leads us to the last part of your case, which is finalizing the agreement. Generally, once we 
agree on a number, finalizing the physical paperwork, the agreement itself, is rather fast. Again, there are certain circumstances where it might take a few months, but generally speaking, once we have an agreed upon settlement amount, we can get papers done in a week or two. Now that we understand the main parts of a workers' comp case and how much time they take, what are some of the more common delays injured workers might run into? Some of the most common ones that we already discussed include taking too long to file a claim, having a claim denied, getting multiple surgeries, and the insurance company dragging their feet during settlement negotiations. Another common source of delays is if you don't actively participate in your claim. For example, if you miss a hearing, your case is going to take longer. If you don't get a permanency report when your lawyer or the judge tells you to, your case will take longer. And if you skip or reschedule your your IMEs, your case is going to take longer. So it is critical that you actively participate in your workers' comp claim if you want it to finish as quickly as possible. Another source of delays is if you need to file or respond to an appeal. It used to add as much as a year in some cases, but recently the board has shortened the appeal times, so they're being heard and resolved more quickly. Now it's usually only a couple of months, but it's still a delay. Another way cases get delayed is if you have a permanent disability and you haven't settled. In these circumstances, your case will need to go to trial to determine the degree of your permanent disability. This can involve depositions, which can take anywhere from 45 to 120 days, depending on how many doctors are involved and what the issues are. There are all kinds of ways your case can get delayed, and we would be here all day if I were to list them all out for you. So if you want to avoid unnecessary delays in your case, the best thing you could possibly do is to talk to a lawyer. They know what mistakes to avoid, what deadlines to hit, and what actions you need to take. They can guide you to make sure your case proceeds as smoothly as possible so you can get on with your life and put this difficult time behind you. And if you're just getting started with your workers' comp case, then be sure to watch my other video, 10 Work workers' comp misconceptions that cost you money. In that video, I clear up some of the most common misconceptions that injured workers have about filing a workers' comp claim, many of which can cost you time and money. I'll include a link to that video here. Click to watch next, and I'll see you there.